Let's be honest with ourselves. Power steering is often one of the last things you think about when building a project car. You don't want to deal with it. You don't even want to spend money on it. It's frustrating. There's certain hoses that just stay expensive because they're not made anymore. Then you have to rebuild the power steering pump or find a new power steering pump that's remanufactured by a company that's not very good. It's, it's not a fun thing to do. So today we're gonna fix that. We're gonna upgrade the power steering system in our Z32 to the 21st century. Now this can easily be applied to just about any Nissan out there, um, 240s, Skylines, just about anything. Anything from the 90s up to about 2002, I'd say. Uh, pretty much all use the exact same fittings and steering rack for their cars. And you can pretty much put this power steering pump in just about any car you have room to. So if you're at all familiar with the VG30 and the ATI damper pulleys, my race damper from ATI has always had problems with throwing my power steering belt. The reason for that is that the pulley on the, on the ATI damper is not aligned properly with the pulley on the power steering belt. Will it work for a short period of time? Yes, but the moment I go to do a first or second gear pull and it slams through that gear really quick, it throws the belt. But if you've driven one of these cars in twin turbo form without power steering, God help you because it's not easy and it's not at all fun. Okay guys, so just a little preface. Long story short, the pump that I chose had a very particular reservoir mounted to it that I liked and I just like the overall shape of it because it fit where I wanted it to go better, I think. But we'll soon find out here because I got them side by side and they actually look to be pretty even, honestly. As you can see here, I've actually purchased a few of these thinking that maybe they were just bad. It is a Ford power steering pump as well as this one, but for some reason, this one is not working. And it's either A, that they are all bad and all fail, or B, there's something that this needs to see in order to turn on from a different control module or a computer, because this will not turn on at all for me. Now, just to show you guys where exactly I'm putting it and what I'm thinking, I've got this little space up in here. Uh, the problem is it doesn't really fit straight up and down. As you can see, there's not much space going vertically, but horizontally, um, and the way this is shaped, I could put the larger side over here with the um, pump and the control module and then put the reservoir in this corner and drill holes up through here to run the hose up into the reservoir which I'll have in the trunk of the car. So I'll easily be able to top it off but I won't be able to hear the noisy pump which will be down here in the back corner. Now as far as the reservoir goes I will be mounting my factory reservoir basically right in here. So the idea is to run the low pressure lines from the reservoir down into the power steering pump which will be mounted underneath in the bumper and then run a return line straight into here. And that's pretty much the gist of it. I think for starters, we're gonna make a bracket. Ultimately, I want this bracket to be very simple. I don't want it to be overly complex and this is where it mounts up originally. So if I can get this to mount up, I think what I might do, take this bracket here and move it to this side. So I think I know now. I still, it's still gonna require some drilling. Okay guys, so this is really what I'm working with here. I went ahead and modified the bracket that came with the electric power steering pump. So these are actually the original brackets. This one was up here, and this one here was over here. As you can see, the bracket that mounts to the pump itself is in the original place. All I did was draw out the spot welds for this one here and this one here, and move them from the sides over to here. So that way, when we go to mount it up under the car, it'll mount just like this. These are the two pressure fittings that I have ordered. I wasn't expecting this one to come as quick as it did, so I wanted to get it done, but now that I have them both here, I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison of them. The Fergola fitting was way more expensive, but if you look at them side-by-side, -side, the Fergola fitting is actually quite a bit shorter than that one. However, I have seen other people who have said they use this one, and it works perfectly fine on this exact pump. Now, what I have here is the factory OEM uh, fitting. If you look closely, it's actually more similar, I would say spacing wise, as the cheaper one. So I may end up using that one 
Um, I, honestly, it's it's kind of a toss up. We'll, we'll see what happens here. Let's screw them both in and see what works better. You should be able to feel the O-ring bottom out once it sets in. I think I think it bottomed out. I'm not I'm not really too certain on that. You know what? Let me try this one. Oh yeah, that one definitely sets in nice. I like this one. I hate to say it, but the pergola fitting may not be the best option for this, which sucks because that was a lot more money. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with this one. So the thing is with the O-ring fittings, when you screw them down, you can, once you get down to the O-ring part of it where it seals, you can really feel the O-ring seating in the place. Uh, pardon the noise today because it's freaking pouring right now. Usually the rains don't last longer than 20, 30 minutes. If it rains all day, I will be impressed. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, I have one more fitting, and this is just a 90 degree uh, female end to male end, 6AN fitting. And it swivels so we can spin it whatever way we want to. So for the 5 8 line, I'm gonna run it into here. But as for this one, instead of bending the hose 90 degrees, which may kink it, and then we have bigger problems. I got a stainless steel fitting, 90 degree. We're just gonna plumb it on here like so. Man, that rain is really killing me right now. Okay guys, so this is pretty much it. This is what uh, the pump is ultimately gonna look like up in there. And it, it's really quite simple. So I'm gonna use one of these two holes right here uh, to run these cables through. I did have my battery literally chilling right here on a battery stand, but I may actually get a smaller size AGM battery and relocate the battery more into the wheel well itself. And it's more so of a cleanliness thing. I really don't like having a giant battery chilling in the trunk, taking up like half of it and probably just shift the battery over and get a smaller size battery for this thing. Okay, so this is what I've got now for my wiring. So this is the main power wire running through the breaker down to the, uh, to electric power steering pump directly. It will be run through, I believe this is an 80 amp breaker here. And then for the ground, I just have the ground coming up through the hole here with the power wire and it's being grounded to the chassis right here. If for any unusual reason I need to get to this, it's all pretty simple to get to. It's just one body interior trim panel that pops off and it's right there. For the final piece of wiring, you have your low current 12 volt wire, which triggers the relay within the pump to turn on the pump. This would probably be best wired into a switch, a uh, toggle switch of sorts, uh, not necessarily ignition power. It, just in case if you run into any kind of electrical issues, you can always just flip the switch and turn the pump off to kind of save the rest of the car. Power steering is more of a comfort rather than a necessity. Uh, race car stuff, right? Now I have wired it into this three pin connector here. Uh, well, it was once a three pin connector. I don't even remember what this was used for, to be honest. I think it was something with my amplifier that was right in this area. Obviously, I don't have a stereo anymore or any speakers or let alone amplifier. Now this will turn the pump on as soon as the key turns on with power. I really just want to get it running today. So this is kind of what we're doing. Eventually, I will run an electric switch within my cigarette uh, lighter or armrest somewhere. And I'll have a little switchboard in there for different little things like this. but. For today, this is what we're gonna do. So this is the hose we're gonna be using. I went from a 10 feet, cause it was six inches too short, to now a 12 feet. It is a Russell Performance. I'll put the exact part number and link down in the description below. And you guys can order your own if you'd like. We're gonna run it right up through here. As you can see, I already have my low pressure line kinda just laying in here. If we can get it to come through. There we go. Okay, so. This is what I've come up with. This is the factory hanger for the fuel lines and the evaporator line and the brake line. I'm keeping the brake line there, obviously, because we need that still. But the evap line is no more. The fuel lines are getting replaced by dash 8AN lines eventually. The power steering lines have got to go right here, which I only have two of them. So we're substituting four small lines for two slightly larger outside diameter lines. And with that, I am basically just chopping these all off They'll slide right in there and I'll be able to reuse my factory hangers and keep the factory hanger for the brake line. Basically, I'm gonna tie into the factory power steering uh, rack with the exact same fittings that are already in there uh, for the most part. Uh, the only thing that's gonna change is the banjo portion itself is gonna be a dash six fitting instead of 
the factory high pressure hose. These are the two fittings that you need to go into the power steering rack. Golly, look at that shiny engine bay. Woo. And for the front, how I tied into the factory power steering uh, rack here, I simply used the two banjo bolts that I showed you earlier. And obviously, this is my low pressure return line. And then we got my high pressure Russell Performance ANs. They're both 6 AN line uh, running to the back. All right, y'all. So this is what we got. Um, I reused, like I said, I reused a lot of the brackets. Some of them have the rubber boots in them, but they're cut. And these other ones that don't uh, did have plastic. We got it all the way along here, up the back, and then I got it kind of wrapping around this guy and then curving up under the fuel tank and over the subframe to the back like I showed you. So that's pretty much done to do it. I'm gonna throw like a zip tie and some stuff up here to kind of keep this tucked up out of the way. I think that'll do perfectly for what we got. And I'll deal with the fuel lines later on on a later date. The reason I'm running a reservoir on this particular style of pump, I don't believe you necessarily need to. Many of these Volvo pumps come with a built-in reservoir and a cap in it that you can fill right on top of the pump and reservoir. Um, this one here, however, because I'm mounting it sideways, I want that reservoir to be 100% full all the time. I don't want to run any risk of it running dry and burning up. So because it's sitting sideways, I need it to be 100% full all the time. I'm going to run a reservoir up top, which will gravity feed into the pump to keep the reservoir that's on the pump 100% full all of the time. I have here some 5 8 inch rubber hose, which according to my measurements, this should be very tight, but will slide right on over top of the nipple that is on the reservoir on the pump. Now, as for my power steering reservoir, I'm probably gonna end up mounting it right here. It is just one little bolt right here that's holding it in for now, and I can slide it off and on quite easily. Um, I can also get access to it if I really need to from up here. I got my 5 8 inch diameter uh, rubber hose running down through the hole here in the back, and that's pretty much the gist of that. So, moving on. Yeah, even with a blindfold or in different time zones Could find my way to you with my eyes closed There's nothing between us Go to Mars and Venus Stand in front of every one of them rocks They slinging and be a shield That's pretty much it. All right, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and test out my electronic power steering. Uh, let's let's see what happens here. I'm gonna go ahead and set y'all up here in the back and uh, turn this thing on. How do we look? Any leaks? I would say that was a freaking success. I'm now going to top off the reservoir. Now I assume it would have sucked some of the fluid down into the lines and filled all the lines up. Doubt it would have filled up the entire system just like that. So I'm gonna top this off and then try it again and just to make sure everything's okay. As you can see, I finally tidied up the interior of the rear of my car and the electron power steering pump is nicely tucked away over here. You really can't even tell that it's back here. I got my battery just kind of chilling here for right now just to test it out. I'm probably gonna switch it over to a smaller AGM battery because this battery is massive. Now for underneath the car, I had to do a few little changes underneath. Um, I decided to route my return hose directly into the top of the pump and then I capped off the hose on the uh, reservoir. And as for wiring, you just got the high current 12 volt and then the low current 12 volt ignition power on right here. Um, this is what triggers the relay that's built into this pump to power on the pump and give it the juice it needs. Let's go ahead and test this power steering pump out and the electronics and all that fun stuff and see how it feels. So the only thing that I'm really worried about or concerned about rather is the fact that I put regular ATF in it. ATF may cavitate more than necessary 
and won't give me a good feel uh, with the steering wheel or it might be too heavy or it might go in and out. So I may end up switching to Pentosyn in the near future. So that's just a little tidbit of information for you guys. Uh, you may need to know. I'll be able to fully bleed the system and really test it out once the engine is in it and there's weight on the ground and we're actually driving the car. But for now, I'm gonna test to make sure the pump turns on and everything's priming just as it should. What do, I don't hear it turning on. <laughs> well, the breaker works because uh, the breaker was turned off. I was playing around with it yesterday and forgot to flip it back on. But as you can hear, it's priming. So let me shut it off and turn it back on and do all that stuff again. So fuel pump priming. And there's the electric power steering pump turning on. I may need to switch to Pentosyn because it feels kind of heavy, honestly. All right, you guys, I guess it's gonna do it for this video. If you enjoyed following along with this video and would like to see more info on this build that's going on, we got big things coming up really soon for it. I'm gonna actually start working on the next video today. And if you wanna follow along, make sure you hit the subscribe button because I guarantee you that's something you're not gonna wanna miss. I hope you guys enjoyed this one, possibly even learned something. Maybe you'd like to copy my exact setup in your own. If you do, don't be afraid to drop a comment, send me a message, hit me up on the social. Uh, usually Instagram is the best way to get a hold of me if you need to. So we'll see y'all next time. Take care, peace out.